now? Is this working now? Is anybody still here at all? We're going to see if this lets me go back online. Mic should be working. I have audio levels. Anybody? Anybody at all? I have audio. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you guys can hear me. We'll try this again. Can anyone hear me? You can hear me. All right. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Hello. Yes. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello, you all. Thank you so much. Um, nothing changed with my settings. I Since my last live stream, everything's been exactly the same. Nothing has changed, so I don't understand. Hello, hello. Good to see you all. Now I just got to find the right stream so I can see what's going on. I literally just hit live stream again. Just start right back up. So should be going. Brandon Weiss is here. There we go. Now I see myself. We're good. We're back. So what I was saying was a lot of cast strength stuff tonight, a lot of normal rye stuff tonight. We're doing rye head-to-heads. I just filmed my cast strength rye head-to-head. -head. Now we're doing um, regular rye head-to-head. -head. I wanted to do a budget rye too. So we've got $20 to $30 ryes and we've got $50 to $60 ryes too. Um, looks like it's lagging to me a little bit. I don't know why. I'm sorry if it is, guys. Um, I um, I had to move my whole setup here into my back uh, back room here, which is going to be the new whiskey room, and I'm having serious internet issues. They're coming out Tuesday to fix to up the internet and give me a, a better router so that we're going to get hopefully no interruptions in stream. I don't understand what's going on, but hopefully we'll be good. Um, we'll give it a minute here to to get on because my output says it's low. I don't understand why. All right, people are saying working now. Video still crap, I know. We'll hopefully get back, get back into it here in a second. Um, thank you guys for uh, for putting up with the technical issues. We're gonna have more technical issues coming up soon with um, YouTube changing things around. Now we have um, Google Hangouts going away. So how we normally collab and we're all on together, um, that's gonna be going away supposedly down the road so uh, very soon actually starting August 1st so it might be a little tough uh, everyone's got fuzzy tonight fuzzy internet yeah it's um it's looking that way on my end too I don't know what's going on like I said they're coming out very soon to fix this so um, we may have to I don't know I may need to reboot everything he, he just had me reset my router which helped a lot I did a test stream off uh, off live and it was fine now it looks like crap so this is just uh, just my luck, but anyway, thanks for being here anyway. Thanks for looking at blurry me, blurry everything. Yeah, we might have to do Facebook Live. I mean, if it's better, I'm, I'm willing to do it. If you guys want to jump on, I don't care. It'll be fun. I haven't done a Facebook Live before, so it'll be our first time. But if you guys can hear me, if you can see me, I know, like you said, it's probably bad resolution right now. Um, let me know what you guys are all drinking. What are you guys all drinking tonight? Anybody having uh, any rye whiskey? Anyone having any rye whiskey? It's just going to be me. I'm going to see if I can mess with my settings a little bit to get the resolution better for you guys. If there's anything I can do or not. I don't know if I can though. Because I think it's a combination of apparently my internet and uh, YouTube both. So. Okay, can see you fine. Good, good, good. I like that. All right, let's 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 get into it then. Um, I apologize about the technical issues. Wouldn't be a live stream without it though. Um, let's get into it a little bit. I don't know why things are lagging, what's going on, but let's start drinking anyway and maybe it'll, uh, it'll all catch on. So, all right, so here's the deal. What I have is two blind flights. So blind flight one and blind flight two um, here is going to be blind flight one, and this is going to be round one. This is the order. So one, two, three, and four. So at the end, remember these at the end, we're going to be talking about which was the favorite and I'll describe them as I go through. I'm not going to know which is which, um, the glasses behind me are all shuffled around. So I don't know which is going to be which here. I'm going to take them down in front of me, but that is the order. So as we, um, at the end, when I do the reveal, my favorite, we'll pull this back up and we'll talk about it together. But 
Um, yeah, a lot of these are mixing bourbons, so it'll be interesting to see how they fare straight. Um, and I have preconceived notions about all of these. And I'm curious to see if it changes when I do try them blind. You know, blind is the true test to see what we really like. So we'll see. All right, all cleared up visually with whiskey. <laughs> you are right. Still buffering? What the hell? I can't do it, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, if you got to jump out, I, I completely understand. I'm sorry. Something's going on. Now on my end, it looks fine. So I, I can't explain what's going on. Try refreshing if you're having issues, I guess. I don't understand what's going on. Things look like they're getting healthier um, on my stream now. So hopefully we're going to be better. Okay, it's going okay now. He says. <laughs> All right, let's try to survive, guys. I don't understand what's going on, but... But let's, uh, let's go into sample number one here. Refreshing seems to work. Thank you. Thank you all. Let's go into number one. Um, number one being, I don't know what number one is. So this is our first sample. Hmm. A lot of nice sweetness on this. It is that peppery, uh, peppery forward on the nose for sure. Cinnamon, baking spice is all right there. Yeah, Captain, make it happen. It's working out great tonight. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Don't do a giveaway as it's struggling to, to stay live, but it looks fine. I appreciate that, DHL. So. Oh, the Linux cat says him and his wife are doing a blind rye flight, four of them. Excellent. What are you guys going to be trying side to side? I'm curious. Um, Doesn't smell... I mean, it doesn't smell that strong, really. Nice sweetness on it, though. All right, let's give it a sip. Cheers, guys. Happy Friday. Thanks for being here. Woo! A lot more bite on that, on the palate. Um, now, most of these are going to be my memory because I, I haven't had... I had the Sazerac rye recently. That's the only one I've had recently, though. And again, most of these I do mix, so it's it's different trying them straight. Uh, Linux Cat says it's completely blind. They'll tell you when you're done. Nice. Very nice, buddy. Based on memory, I'm going to say this is the um, Old Overholt Bonded. And Old Overholt, if you guys haven't had that before, the, the base Old Overholt is very much a budget rye mixer only, um, in my opinion. But this is the Bonded. And the bond being kicking up, kicked up in proof and being a rye whiskey anyway, it gives you a nice Kentucky hug going down. And actually, the flavor's really nice, too. Mm. I mean, assuming that's what this is, I guess. I don't know. I can um, hold this up to the camera. I don't know if it's going to show up. I won't look, at my, um, won't look at my stream for the next couple seconds, but... Hopefully, if you guys can see it, someone just say yes or no, you can see it. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not going to look, but I'll just look at chat. Smells good. I actually really like this. If this is the um, the old Overholt, it's, um, I do like it a lot. <laughs> Brandon Weiss says, nope, can't see it. Damn it. <laughs> Should have written in Sharpie. Too boring. Damn camera, man. I'm telling you. I'm going to try, hopefully next stream, once I get this whiskey room up and running a little more, I'm going to try streaming for my DSLR instead. Um, with my camera only, I found this out today, will only stream 30 minutes in a row without having to go turn it off, turn it back on. I know uh, Bobby at Iowa She Wines was having those problems for a while too. Um, they actually had to get a new camera, I think. But for me, it's too late. I've had the thing too long. So I'm going to either have to turn it off and turn it on every... 30 minutes or find some other solution for live streaming that's going to be good quality because I can't deal with this keep happening art all the time. It's too frustrating for everyone. Hmm. I'm a fan of this though. Whatever this is, I am a fan. I like it. All right, let's go on to glass number two. All these numbers. Mm, now this smells more like a classic rye whiskey to me. 
much more dry on the nose, I'd say. Yeah, definitely that drying note. Pepper, cinnamon. Steve, I uh, use a um, 1080i or 1080p, whatever the highest quality Logitech webcam is. I use that right now for this stream. After Tuesday, they're going to up my internet to the highest they offer and um, give me a better router too. So that better solve things. Otherwise, I'm switching services. So. Mm. Peter White says the Saz. Um, with the Saz, I get, usually get a, a good amount of sweetness with it. And honestly, I feel like the old Overholt could have been a little bit, if that's what this is, I don't even know. Uh, but it, it tasted like that to me. Um, like it had a little more sweetness to it than even this does. As I go deeper in the glass, though, more of those citrus notes do come out. Orange, lemon. Another nice one. Mm. Hey, Bill, good to see you. Tastes sweeter on the palate. Um, I'm trying to think, with, with Old Forester, I normally get always a very distinct floral note. I guess that's how I describe it, as a floral note with Old Forester. Uh, I'm not picking that up right now. But there was a nice amount of sweetness on this. This could be the Saz, actually. This could be the baby Saz. I know, I know, Steve. Believe me, I know. It's the network computer. My computer can handle um, three 4K monitors, and I don't even use 4K monitors. I use 1080i, so that's two 1080i's per one 4K monitor. So it's not the computer either, it's the internet. It will be fixed. I promise you all. Whiskey Dick says um, he's been challenging me. Drank some Belcones Rye on the flight home. Oh, buddy. Isn't that stuff good, though? Paul Christensen, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for being here. DJ Beacon also. Lochness, Richie Z, good to see you. Alex Julian, thank you all so much for being here. And ADHD Fishing. Welcome in, bud. Yes, Bill, that uh, Balcones rye is something special. I love that chocolatiness. Woo, chocolate rye, baby. Oh, yeah. I'm a fan. I am a fan. What would you think of it, Bill? Um, ADHD Fishing said, my bus broke down the highway. I had to call out the mechanics. Happy accident. I'm sorry, buddy. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. But hey, your, uh, your internet must be working. You're watching the stream. Welcome. Wish you had some whiskey to make it better. Tasty for sure, Bill says. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah, I think this has another layer of sweetness as well, but it's definitely mellowed down from sample one. Sample one was definitely higher proof, or at least it burned a lot more. Could be higher rye mash bill too than this, but I think this is probably baby Saz if I was guessing. Stellar Matrix says she's got some Belcones rye in her lineup. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I just posted a picture on my uh, Instagram and Facebook today. Belcones rye just hit Michigan. One store near me got Belcones Rye. I, they said they have a rep they talked to, I guess, in, um, from Belcones, and it, it hit. I haven't gone and got it yet, but I'm planning to. I love that bottle when Matt sent me that sample. Woo, so good. Jason, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for being here. Let's go to uh, sample number three. So, man, blinds are tough. Blinds are tough. The Linux cat knows. Blinds are tough. You don't know what you're doing. Mm. Now this has a interesting, more unique nose. And when I say that, it's got the, I think this is the old Forester nose. What I describe again is that kind of floral, earthy, a little more earthy, you know. Old Forester has a very unique profile, I feel like. Maybe, maybe not. I, we'll see. Off initial impression, though, I'm going to say that's what this is. It's probably uh, Old Forester. One really packed a punch. Ooh, you may have some high proof stuff then, buddy. That's round two. We're going to be doing round two soon. High proof, baby. Mm. 
Crazy chocolate orange on the balcony is right. It's like a Manhattan. You're right. It's it's black too. It's a black rye, which for the, the age is just crazy. That's good. That is that is good. I, I think this is the old Forester. I have always been a fan of this old Forester rye since I first got this bottle. Um, it doesn't taste like a standard like a normal rye to me, but it's definitely unique. But I like it. I really like the flavor profile in this. Definitely not drying, I don't think, compared to some other rye, rye whiskeys out there. Mm. I'm a fan. I am a fan of that one. Whatever that is, I'm a fan of that one. Mmm. Mm. Three's good. Three is really good. This is going to be a tough flight too. Even these low proof ones are going to be um, going to be tough, tough decisions. Whew. Uh, Neil the Deal says um, the Old Forester Rye is just straight different. Love the notes. You're right. It is. It's not like a normal rye at all. It's really not, um, and I think that's what makes it so unique and delicious. If that's what this is, I, I really don't know. Uh, I think Old Forester Rye and Bourbon share a similar yeast strain. I think you're right, Whiskey Ace. Um, thanks for being here. So they do. Um, Old Forester only uses one yeast strain as far as I know. That's all they use. So um, that's got to be in both. That's the case. Mm. Sample number four little harsher on the nostrils. It's got kind of a youthful grassy note to me, I guess. Hey y'all, it's Drunk Pool Sam. Bobby's drunk at Larry's, very nice, welcome in. Drunk Pool Sam, the best kind of Sam. Um, initial nose on this, I'm going to say this is the Rittenhouse. And the times I've drank Rittenhouse straight, which is not that often, honestly, I, um, I was not a big fan. I think I've always said Rittenhouse is definitely to me more of a cocktail rye than something I would want to drink straight, really. So. Eh. Well, now that I go back in again, though, I get a little bit of that old Forester Old Forester yeast funk too. Man, blind flights, guys. Uh. So when I go deeper in the glass on this, um, it's not as harsh anymore. It's more that floral banana note, honestly. Hmm. Damn. Like an idiot. Uh, Brandon Weiss says, can you get peerless rye? I can. Um, the single barrel, no, not really. But the um, the small batch is available. It's about 100 and, probably 110, 115 where I can get it though. So I don't know. That's tough for me. At that price point, that's tough. This might be Old Forester. I could have been talking about Rittenhouse the whole time. About the, the last one I was just having, I could have been talking about Rittenhouse. Yeah, I think it's um I think it's more more banana, more yeasty. The yeasty boys. I do. I think it might be It could be old Forester. Peerless is is really good. Um I've only tried the actual small batch once, but the had some single barrels that were just ridiculous. Some of those single barrels, um, I tried a couple that a buddy had from a distillery or from the distillery itself. Some unique ones that like Jason and um, Scott and Dusty Dan got to try. Man, there are some of them that are just ridiculously good. It's amazing how single barrels can be that different. 
See you later, Captain. Have a good night. I'm out, y'all. Have a great night. Tiki bar time. Oh, boy. Get yourself some girly tiki cocktails. The yeasty boys. There's definitely banana on this. I think, um, I think this is Old Forester. I think this is Old Forester now. Three, again, we'll go back down. For that price, um, get the Barrel Rye 13 year Canadian cast strength. I think it would send Peerless Packing for the same price. Honestly, it's kind of tough for me to even think about anything Canadian right now after the traumatizing experience I had about three days ago. Um, but yes, I'm sure it's delicious. I'm sure it's delicious. That Canadian is. I'm sure there's. I'm sure there's. There's great Canadian out there. You know, I've had Lot 40 cast strength, and it's good. It's very good. So. All right, sample three again. Hmm. Hmm. Sample. Th I don't know. I think four. So I'm looking at the color in these glasses, and four is the darkest as well. Um, and that t leads me to believe it's Old Forester because Old Forester just always has that dark looking color. Probably again because of the yeast strains. Three, not as impressed as I was the first time through. Two is harsher than three, too. So based on memory, I'm going to say this third glass here is the Sazerac, right? The baby Saz. Sample two. Mm -hmm. Sample two is more that harsh, brittle note, which I get with Rittenhouse. I think um, two is going to be um, the written house. I'm, I'm guessing three. Let me go back to three again. You do have to watch out for those Canadians. You do. Three's got more sweetness. I think. I think three is the Saz. Dusty Dan, you're right. Three is that Saz. It's not as brittle. Harsh on the nose, like two. Four, I mean that color, that is dark. Dark, baby. Dark chocolate. Ooh. And banana. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeast won't impact the color, Steve A says. Distillate's going to be clear. That's a great point, buddy. Make me look like an idiot. Thank you very much. But, okay, but... Who else agrees with me, though? Old Forester in general is darker. I've got, I don't know, I must have put it back, but I had the 100 proof um, signature bottle out here, too. And that is very dark as well. I mean, much darker than a normal. Normal. Andrew Spirell, that's a great question, buddy. Um, yes, so I did post a Patreon only on my Patreon page video of the After the Live with um, the BJ Boys and Jason from the Mash and Drum and I Whiskey She Wines. Um... On that video, you know, I said, I don't ever, like, this is the honest truth. After any of these live streams, any reviews, anything I do when I drink, it's like, I don't get hangovers from whiskey. I really don't. Unless I'm drinking just absolute crap all day or something, like crap whiskey, you know, like really, really, really crappy whiskey. Um, but I don't really do that anymore. And I, that was the first time I had an actual hangover from whiskey that I can remember. I mean, and it was not fun. I am really going to study up for the next one. That's for sure. Mm. This has got to be Old Forester. I'm going to go back to number one again. Mm. So one actually has a little bit of that musty wood note as well. Yeah, Basil Hayden Dark Rye is darker, you're correct, but that doesn't count. <laughs> you're right, buddy, that doesn't count. I don't count that. <laughs> I 
Revenge is coming. That's right. It's best served warm. Hmm. Going back through these, it's amazing the um, the difference and how much they change trying things back to back in different orders. Man, that's that's something. Hmm. Son of a bitch. It might be, that might be. No. Son of a bitch. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, hang on. All right, based strictly on what I'm drinking straight, not mixed. I'm gonna do my order here. One, two, three, four. Fourth place, what I would drink straight, not mixed in a cocktail. Let me pull up the graphic for you guys again so you can see this. Um, where do we go here? That should be good. All right. So, um, my fourth choice was sample number one. So, yes, I don't even have the graphic up now. There we go. Um, it is the Rittenhouse. So, yes, going back through the second time, I was correct. It is the Rittenhouse and not something I would drink straight um, pretty much ever. I There's so many better options out there. That's just it, you know, um, a lot of better options for budget rye. Very good in a cocktail, though. I mean, this is the first rye I bought, and being a bottled and bond, 100 proof, it's um, a very good option for cocktails. Still gives you that whiskey flavor, rye flavor coming through. So nothing wrong with it. Still about the $25 price range for me. So yeah, not bad. Um, my third favorite choice was sample number two, which I guessed was the um, Old Overholt, which is correct, Old Overholt Bonded. Now, this isn't a whiskey I hear people ever talking about. Um, I hear them talking about Old Overholt by the, itself, but the Bonded, I think, is really something nice, actually. An extra, a really nice extra level of sweetness in it. And I really, I really think it, it's overall a very versatile rye whiskey. I mean, straight or in a cocktail, it's not off-putting when you drink it straight. I prefer to drink bourbon straight myself. I'm not a huge rye whiskey straight guy anyway, but... Mm -mm. Still good. Still nice burn going down too. All right, so you guys know three and four. I'm gonna come back to me. You see my pretty face. All right, so my second choice was, uh, second favorite choice, which my guess was Old Forester on this one, I believe, is sample number three. So yes, Old Forester. First time through, that Sazerac really, really tasted like Old Forester. I don't know what order they were in originally, but. Mm. Um, yes, but looking at the color, darker than the rest, and that banana note I really got a lot um, second time through. I guess that banana yeasty chocolate Old Forester profile. Hmm. Yeah, that's Old Forester. Now that I know, I can say that. Which means, number one choice for budget rye whiskey. Caveat, I mean, if you can find it, you know, I've heard distribution, depending on the area, is, is good. I mean, in this lineup, I think Saz and Old Forester are really neck and neck. It's what I'm in the mood for. Um, this does confirm, fortunately for me, that what I've always said, which is Sazerac is more a rye whiskey I would drink straight you know, the baby says, whereas the Rittenhouse I'm always going to use in a cocktail. I don't want to drink that straight. Um, Neil the Deal asks, gets banana split on Old Forest Dry? Absolutely. That's kind of that banana creaminess. You know, that's exactly what it is, is that, that creaminess that goes along with the Old Forester profile. And then the Sazerac. Sazerac, um, I don't know the specifics of this rye whiskey. I'm guessing it's probably a barely legal rye. 
just because of the extra layer of sweetness I get compared to other rye whiskeys. Very good though. Very solid. Um, all of them are good. Very good. I like it a lot. Mm. Let me pour some more water here so I can prep the old palate for cast strength. Speaking of cast strength, tomorrow, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern, cast strength reviews hit a thousand subscribers, and they are doing a pretty long stream. I mean, we don't know how long it's going to go, I don't think yet, but they've got eight, nine people already planning on going. I'm going to be going on probably about 9 p.m. Eastern. So I'm going to be joining them, drinking some whiskey, talking, uh, talking a thousand, and I don't even know what we're going to be drinking yet, but we'll find out. So make sure you tune in at 1 p.m. Eastern time, I believe it is. Uh, they'll be going all day, kind of doing like the uh, Scotch Test Dummies just did with their 12 hours of boom. So let me clear these glasses out, and I'll move the bottle so you can see. Linux Cat says they are on the final tasting result soon. All right. Make sure you tag my name in there so I can see. Uh, Whiskey A says he could see the similarity between Old Forester and Sazerac. Yeah, uh, you're right. I mean, you really can. And doing them blind, you really, I mean, you don't know, of course. And initial time through, it definitely tasted similar. After, um, after going back, though, it was better. I, I was able to figure it out. So, All right, let's move on to cask strength time. Here we are, blind round number two. Beauty, beautiful, isn't she? I'm gonna put these on the counter. Steve A says, uh, okay, a little ca Sagamore cast strength followed by Knob Creek cast strength. Excellent choices, my friend, excellent choices. I'll be doing the same. All right, got these on the counter. I'm gonna shuffle these around. So you can see these are the um, the order of the numbers. Again, we'll come back. Most of these were included in my um, blind cast strength head-to-head -head I just did. The only one that wasn't was the Pikesville. And the reason I decided to include the Pikesville was because I had so many people just write to me like in private messages or even comment on the videos and things saying, you know, oh, Pikesville would have been a good one to put in there. Why wasn't that included? So I figured... I better put that in instead. And I figured I'd take out the will at four year because that did win in round one, um, which I was incredibly surprised about. I never thought the cast strength head to head that will at four year rye would come out ahead, but it really didn't. It was great. Um, Jason says he thinks Pikesville and Michter's for one and two. It could happen. So honest truth, the only time I've ever had Pikesville is when I was at a Heaven Hill Tasting, actually, at one of my local places. And um, it was really good. You know, of course, everyone had talked about Pikesville. I had a bottle at home already, actually. I just hadn't opened it yet. Still haven't. This was my first um, time opening the bottle since uh, since the tasting. So uh, let's see. Neil the Deal says he's going Knob Creek 1, Michter's 2. Yeah. I, the Knob Creek, when I did the blind, had a, a very unique um, mustiness to it. So I'm curious to see if that comes through. I'm going to keep these challenge coins on top of here too as I go down because I like to trap those aromas in there. Let's start with the first sample here. Uh, Richie Z said tomorrow didn't catch the time. I think it's 1 p.m. Eastern. I could be wrong. Pretty much all day. Anytime you tune in, it's going to be going. Jimmy Daniels, good to see you, bud. And Jeffrey Patron, how are you guys doing? Sample one. just elevated it's just elevated I mean already far superior to round one <laughs> I mean that kind of goes without saying initial nose um, I don't get the musty wood so I'm guessing it's not this not the knob creek Um, I went back to the um, the Michter's Barrel Strength a couple times since the um, the Cast Strength review I did, and I got a lot more dill, and I'm not getting the dill as much on this, so possibly not that. 
I don't remember much of the Sagamore. That was my last sample of the four in the cast strength flight head to head. So I don't remember too much what it tasted like. Could be the Sagamore um, or it could be the Pikesville. It's one of those two I'm thinking. Mm. Man, oh man. That's just a, a really, really good rye whiskey. Mm. I mean, honestly, for being that high proof, it's got almost like a buttery mouthfeel. I mean, it's coating the palate so well. I'm thinking this is Pikesville. Um, I definitely think this is Pikesville. I mean, I've only had it one time, so could be wrong, but it still has kind of that Heaven Hill profile. Um, people who are big whiskey drinkers, which probably a lot of you are watching this, it's Heaven Hill. It's still kind of a, a nuttiness almost, if I can say that. Nuttiness with all the classic rye whiskey notes. Mm. I like that. Woo! That burns the side of the tongue. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Mm hmm. Daddy like. Dustin Martin says he likes his Pikesville quite a bit. You and me both, buddy. If that's what this is, you and me both. Let me cap that back up and we'll move on to sample number two. All right, sample number two doesn't look as dark in my light here. Hmm. Um, a little more mellowed on the nose. It doesn't give you the amplified just boom of flavors when you initially put your nose in it. Definitely um, smells muted compared to sample one. So initial impression, sample one is, is beating this. Still tastes like, or smells like a rye whiskey, a, um, a nice strong <laughs> rye whiskey. <laughs> Neil the deal. Daddy eats what he wants to. That's right. Mm. Flavor's very nice. Flavor's really nice on that, though. Mm -hmm. So almost a licorice, licorice note in this. Um... This smells like it's got age on it though. This smells like it's got age and it's reminded me a little bit of that musty, musty wood note. Could be the knob. This, this might be the knob. So Knob Creek is the oldest of everything we have here. Um, let's run down the list here. So Sagamore is probably, they don't disclose, but most likely four to five years. Linux Cat says the results are in. Let's hear it. I want to hear what you got, buddy. Um, Michter's is, again, undisclosed, but probably around six years as well. Knob Creek is the oldest at nine years. And then the Pikesville, again, probably around six years. So, but this is reminding me of that mustiness. Yeah, Richie, didn't that, didn't that old Forester Rye open up really nice? That opened up really nice. Mm. Uh, Dustin, this is the Knob Creek Barrel Strength Rye Whiskey. Um, barreled in 09 is what it says right on the front label there. 119.6 proof. Hmm. That mustiness does not come through on the palate, though, like I remember. <laughs> Did I say bottled? <laughs> Oops, barreled in, uh, barreled in 2009. And I bought this bottle last year, late end of last year. Killer Joel, good to see you, bud. 
Having some dickle rye. Excellent. Join the rye party. We're all here just drying out our palates. Sucking up all those those juices. Richie Z said, it did. Banana citrus chocolate. Yeah, it is. Um, Neil the Deal described it as, um, you know, like a banana split. And that's actually a really good description. Banana split with almost some like um, orange orange shavings on top, you know. Barreled. Yeah, I didn't know if I said it wrong, Steve. <laughs> My bad. Little licorice note in this, though. The nose does smell older. Sample of the new version. Um, that's probably this one, if that's what you're talking about. Because I don't know if they've released one for this year yet. I'm not getting the age as much on that, on the palette. A little bit on the back end, but not like, not like normal. Yeah, Dustin, so I mean the base Knob Creek Rye by me is about 30 bucks. The um, Knob Creek Single Barrel, the 115, like the store picks are about 50, and then Knob Creek Barrel Strength Rye is about 70. State minimum here I think is 69.99, so. Mm. Not a loser so far. They're both good. Mmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Linux Cat has his results in. Um, number one, Corsair Rymageddon. Mmm. Nice. I have not had that one. Two is Pikesville Rye. Three, Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye. And four, Wild Turkey 101. Which is another one I have not had, actually, Wild Turkey Rye 101, but a lot of people say it's pretty solid for the price and what it is. Sounds like a good lineup, though, bud. We're pretty similar, honestly. I'm wondering if you got a, um, a mustiness at all on that Knob Creek Cast Strength Rye. Because I, I think I do a little bit. Very, um, very oily and viscous, especially some of the store picks I've had, Richie, I agree. For sure. All right, three is barrel char. This is the Michters, I think. Since the uh, the head to head, I've had the most up close and personal experience with this whiskey out of everything else. Pete McNeil says he's sipping the 101 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people say it's really solid for what it is. And it would have a kick compared to the others. It's uh, 120 proof, so that makes sense. Probably the highest you were drinking. The dill note, um, coming through a lot more on the Michter's barrel strength. Someone can probably speak to this, because I'm not sure. I couldn't find the answer when I was doing a little research on it. I didn't do extensive, but this is sourced. Most of Michter's stuff is sourced, of course. And um, But where is the, the barrel strength rye sourced from? Jason, you went to the distillery. Maybe you'll know. Where is the um, Michter's barrel strength rye sourced from? Because it's definitely a dill forward. I'm getting a lot more dill on this than um, I did in my head-to-head, -head, blind head-to-head -head before. I apologize about the stream issues, guys. Um, I know it's tough to watch. I appreciate you guys all hanging out here. Still got almost 40 in the chat, and thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, Mrs. Linux Cat, here we go. She picked Wild Turkey 101 Rye first. How about that? Pikesville number two. So everything else was the same except you you flipped your one and four, huh? That's funny. How about that? Yeah. There you go. I guess it's pretty good. Chocolatey dill. Lots of dildo. <laughs> Lots of dildo. Mm. I the nose is great though. I mean, it definitely smells like a burnt barrel. I mean, I'm getting a lot of burnt barrel char, which I love. I love that burnt caramel note that comes through on on bourbon. That's one of the reasons I love it.
Dill does go across. <laughs> Dill does go across the palate. Um, finishes a little bit chocolatey, um, well rounded, very nice mouth coating on this too. I am definitely a fan of this Michter's Barrel Strength. Um, I want to know where it came from, where it's actually from. I'm curious, but the barrel strength is very nice. One hundred nine point three. 109.6 on this bottle I have, um, and it's it's good. Assuming that's what that is, who the hell knows? All right, let's go into sample number four. Hmm. So this is a little more bright on initial nose. Bright as in sharp, I guess. Um, a little more sharp on the nose. Sorry, Matt. Thanks for being here anyway, bud. Hmm. Um, another very unique, um, unique rye, I think it, um, it doesn't smell like the rest of them, which an, again, um, the Sagamore is technically a Maryland rye and some of you again can probably talk more about this than me, but a Maryland rye is, um, supposedly different. Um, from reading about Sagamore, they use two different mash bills of their rye whiskey. So one is a higher rye around 70% and one's just a barely legal rye around the 50%. But this is more peppery, sharp on the nostrils. Not as well-rounded as the rest of them. It just kind of burns, stings a little bit. So I, um, I don't enjoy that as much as some of the other ones. Jason says he doesn't know who Michter's source is from, but he can tell me it's not um, it's not one source. Hmm. Sounds like a question for the next time we're all together. Who does Michter's source from? I'll find the answer. And no one will know it. I appreciate it, Richie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. You guys are all troopers. You guys are all troopers for hanging out through this mess. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dustin. I appreciate that. Hit refresh, guys. Hit refresh. I know we're having massive problems right now. Internet is a real bitch. A real bitch. Flavor is really nice on that, though. Flavor is really nice on number four. Mmm. Mmm. Thank you so much, Lennox Cat. I appreciate that. Jason Coates says uh, YouTube's been wonky for him for days. Well, I mean, maybe it's a little bit of both, you know. I've been having internet issues the last, like, two weeks. That's why they're coming out to fix it. But I wanted to try to get a live stream in. I'm going to have to wait till next week when this is fixed, and I'll do some test streams um, before I do anything again. So I apologize all, but thank you guys so much for hanging out anyway. Four is pretty good. Four is pretty good. I like it. It's just sharper, not as well-rounded as the rest. Um, I'm guessing it's probably the Sagamore cast strength, but could be wrong. All right. 
I'm going to run back through, back to sample three real quick. We're already hitting that hour mark, but mm. chocolatey, dilly, 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 dilly. Whew. I like that smell though. The char. <laughs> Have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again? Yes. Must be raining. Thank you for your help, tech support. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, man. The Linux cat, Mrs. Linux cat, is feeling the buzz after the samples. Well, buddy, you better get off this stream and go pay her a visit, my friend. Put on the bathrobe. Pour some more of that Wild Turkey 101 rye, and you have yourself a great night. <laughs> we suddenly became a Bud Light commercials. Uh, Jason says Mictor's main source is... Not sure. I should say we save it for the quiz. I think you're right. Save it for the quiz. Steve A does tech support. Well, that's right, buddy. Then you, you have already helped me with a lot of tech stuff, so... More than I can thank you for. Feel free to come over and fix my internet anytime you want. <laughs> Neil the Deal says we should all transition to the robes. I like it. I like it. I still have to figure out something to do for my um, thousand subscriber, which thank you all very much for being here. And thank you all for the support. I really appreciate that through this shit show of a, an episode but um something to do for the thousand subscriber uh live stream and and everything um i'd really like to i'd really like to do what like you know scotch test dummies and cast strength is doing with a really long live stream and just be live for as long as i possibly can without going crazy but the thing is with whiskey you can't do it like you can with like video gamers we can do 24 hour, 36 hour streams with whiskey. It's like if I have, I'd have to limit myself to like a drink or two an hour and I would have the biggest raging headache probably by the end of it. So that would be a lot. Um, thank you so much, Neil. You are really the man, really the man. I appreciate that. Like button is smash. Thanks brother. I also have to think of something for super chats. That's a whole nother thing. Jason's got his whole drum thing. It goes so well with everything. Bobby and Sam, they just, it's all based on things they talk about through the whole thing. So they all have their own thing they do. Bourbon junkies have the wheel. So, I mean, there, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I got to figure something out. Dustin says, drink barrel aged beers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got a whole storage closet full of them plus you can't even see it but right there is even more it doesn't look like much but that's probably about seven or eight uh six packs of craft bourbon barrel aged beer there my storage closet's full as well so that's what i was into before i got into whiskey so now it's a lot of whiskey but hmm This has got to be Knob Creek. It's musty. It's mustier than the rest. That's got to be it. I kind of like that musty note, though. I do. I kind of like it. Be original. Be yourself. Do your own thing. Uh, do your own thing for Super Chats, my friend. You're right, buddy. You're right. Will do. Will do, bud. I appreciate it. Everyone just keep hitting that refresh button. Everyone hit that refresh button. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Guy Davis says, if you quiz or do a test of any kind, make sure you have the correct answers, unlike Sean. Nothing debatable, huh? <laughs> Nothing debatable? Oh, okay. I'll have to get some definite stuff. Like, um... 
What year was the first bottle of bourbon ever put into a bottle? No one knows. Who was the father of bourbon? The actual father of bourbon? Hmm. I'll get another guest in, Richie, sure, but um, they would have to host so that I can get some damn good internet connection. <laughs> Jason. Jason says, is there any way you can go insane for every super chat? What would you call that, Jason? How would I do that? Like, just like Super Saiyan? Like uh, Dragon Ball Z or something? Like, <laughs> like seize out in the chair or something? <laughs> Could happen. It could happen. We'll see. Peter White says Elijah Craig. So they call him the father of bourbon, but was it? Who knows? Who knows? Was he really? I feel like I've gotten off the beaten trail of rye whiskey here. Cast strength will do that to you. Founders KBS, Nick. Yeah, I got a... Um, I have a 2015 through 2019 flight ready to go with that stuff in my closet. Of course, I live 10 minutes from the distillery, so it's all around here. <laughs> Jason, just run around the room and kick stuff. I'd super chat you to see that. <laughs> you got it, buddy. You got it. <laughs> DH Silv says, for each super chat, <laughs> for each super chat, you send out samples of Viagra. <laughs> no whiskey, Dick. You got it, bud. You got it. <laughs> oh man, too much fun. Sample one is really good. That is so solid. I could drink that stuff all day. Man, oh man, that's good. This is a tough head-to-head. -head. How do we choose this? Who was the father of rye? Oh, I like your thinking, Doug. I like your thinking. Scott, good to see you, bud. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for being here. One has got to be um, Pikesville. It's got to be. It's got to be the Pikes. Mmm. I like it. That's chocolatey too. A lot of rise, I get a very nice chocolate note. Mmm. Thomas H. Handy. Handy. Could have been. Uh, Linux Cat asked, what was my order on the first flight? Um, so I put Sazerac rye first. And then um, Old Forester rye second. Old Overholt third, and then Rittenhouse Rye last. So actually the opposite, four, four through one is what I went with. And that's about right. I mean, that is about right for what it is. Pikesville, I agree, Whiskey Ace. It's probably barely legal rye. I don't think it's, I've never really looked at the mash bill on it. But it's got a very nice layer of sweetness to it too. Which is funny because Rittenhouse is probably le barely legal rye too, but it's a lot sharper to me than Pikesville. Obviously, Pikesville's a lot more rounded off. Mm. Mm -mm. All right. Let's put these in order. We love Baby Saz. Baby Saz is good. A little bit of that baby says. Dilly dilly. I'm going to go with the dilly dilly is my number one. I think this is the Michter's Barrel. Um, initial neck pour in my last flight I did, I was not a big fan. The notes didn't come out on it, but it's opened up. Even it's just barely past the neck now, it's opened up a lot. A lot. It's really good. Uh, Steve A asked if I ever got a sample of the Driftless Glen 51 rye. No. 51% ABV, 51% rye mash bill. Ooh, that sounds nice, though. Barely legal does mean legal. <laughs> In every aspect of the word, you are correct. So I'm going with uh, sample three is my number one, which I guessed was Michter's Barrel. Um, oh, boy. Now, between my second favorite, 
the Pikesville or that musty wood, which I'm kind of starting to like. It's still a little off-putting to me. I'm going to go um, number two, which I'm guessing is Pikesville. I am going to go with the Knob. I think it's the Knob Creek third. And then I'm going to still go with Sagamore as my last choice on this. I'm assuming, this is all assuming, assumptions. Assumptions being made. So let's go ahead and pull the graphic back up so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. And I'll grab number four first, or my last choice. The bottom of this Glen says... Number, oh my gosh, I can't read this. It's all blurry now. One, number one. So, yep, that is Sagamore. <laughs> Why did that get me so much, Linux Cat? Baby says do 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 do. Baby says do 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 do. When you have kids, you get that, you know. But yes, uh, this is <laughs> this is Sagamore. Sagamore Rye, still a solid cast strength. It's um, it's just sharper, sharper. I'm really, really curious to try a um, store pick coming out soon of this, I know. And it's actually from our very own Whiskey Crusaders. They are doing a Sagamore store pick, I believe it is. And that is gonna be, I mean, they say this barrel's good, good stuff. So I'm really curious to try it side to side. It's gonna be good. Not a bad rye, of course. I mean, it's still better than every single thing we tried in round one, but um, probably because I love castering so much, you know? Mm. All right. My third favorite choice was sample number... Well, first, I guessed it was a Knob Creek. And sample number three, it is Knob Creek. How about that? It helps I've tried these before now, um, with the exception of the Pikesville lately, but... It's very musty, very musty, um, and that was the giveaway, you know. It's not a bad note. If you if you like that that old older wood smell, if you like old wood, if you like old wood, give, give it a give it a try. Price is still seventy bucks, um, but if you're a collector like me, and you like trying you know a little bit of everything, it's something that's worth a worth a pickup, you know. Yeah, I'm doing okay so far, Jason. We still got two to go, so we'll see, but... Mm. I like that too, though. I mean, there's not a bad one of these, man. There is not a bad one. They're all good. <laughs> Charles. <laughs> Chris, you found a way for your stream to work. Just keep the static picture up. You got it, buddy. You got it. <laughs> what a dick. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here, Charles. Really, I really do. I know everyone, we're having technical difficulties, but whatever. We'll power through. We're all drinking, right? It's it's all going to get blurry anyway, so. Sample number two, my second favorite choice, was, uh, my guess on this was the Pikesville. This is Pikesville. Man, oh man. I think I nailed this whole thing. How about that? Nailed it to the ground. Pikesville is... Wow. So try and blind, I wasn't sure how Pikesville would fare. It's actually... I mean, it's actually really good. Really good. Um, probably between that $50 and $60 range for me. So price-wise, it's cheaper than the rest of them. I mean, the rest of them were $70 bottles. So if you can get Pikesville and you have not tried it, do it. Do it, man. <laughs> we have a good idea what blind round two is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like Pikesville. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Which means our dram of the evening. Let me put this back and get this out of here. Mictors, barrel, strength, rye, whiskey. There he is. Beautiful. It's sourced and it's beautiful. I always say I don't care. I don't care at all if something is sourced. I care how it tastes. And Mictors tastes delicious. It really is. 
it is just delicious. Um, I'm, this is a tough bottle to find. I'm not going to lie. I mean, we all know it's a tough bottle to find. And um, I was very fortunate to be to have someone um, provide this bottle for me. Um, I still paid for it, but I was able to find someone who was able to get it. Uh, Mark JG, good to see you, bud. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate you hanging out. You came into a disaster of a stream, buddy, but um, thanks for being here anyway. I appreciate it. But I love this Mictors. I really do. Um, it's going to open up even better. I really think so. And um, it's already opened up so much just in the first quarter of the bottle. So I'm really looking forward to see what it has to offer coming up, coming up down the road. Mm. Uh, pal Joey, hey buddy, said, uh, tried the AD Laws straight rye, pure blackberry upon sipping. You know, I've gotten the note a couple times in the um, in, in rye whiskey. That, that's definitely a note you can get. Chemical finish needs more barrel smoothing. Yeah. wonder what the age is on that because that's probably... That that's probably um the issue. You know, it needs a little more age. Rye can only hide so much. Terry D, thanks for being here. The whiskey wizard. Yeah. I wouldn't go that far. Blind tastings will humble you um quickly, very quickly. Fortunately, only about two weeks ago I did this pretty much this blind flight, so I had that in my head already. Um I have not done a a budget blind flight before, so that was that was pretty good how I did on that, but um, no, you put four whiskeys I don't know in front of me, and it's probably going to be a disaster. It's a disaster. This was fun, though. I like this. I mean, anytime you get eight drams of whiskey, you really can't complain. I wish the stream was a little better. I wish the internet was working a little better, but I'm going to try to try my very best to get it fixed for you all for um, whenever the next live stream is, so... As you can see behind me now, we've got a couple more pieces of um, plywood, I guess you will, or whatever you'll call it, um, for the whiskey room. So behind me, which for any of you who haven't seen, this is the new table I actually just got from Amazon. It's kind of a wood barrel top table. And this is going to be the table for one of my scenes I'm going to have. So I'm, gonna, I'm planning to have two different like settings of the whiskey room. So like one in the corner over here, one in the corner over here. Maybe the middle too. And this is going to be all shelves behind me. That's the plan. Hopefully get some lighting and things like that, but I need a new place for all my bottles. So that's uh, <laughs> that's the plan. That's the plan. Um, I think it's gonna look good. We're gonna do some work on it tomorrow. So any of my patrons, if you guys um, are patrons or support me on Patreon, I'm gonna be putting up a, a whiskey room remodel video, kind of like a time-lapse type thing. I've already got some from when I moved in here and um, started getting the stuff on the floor and this built up and everything so it's going pretty well eric wait good to see you thanks for being here man you look like you're having an awesome time on that trip man oh i'm so jealous of you hello from edinburgh just woke up to take a quick it's 3 a.m here cheers buddy pour yourself a glass 3 a.m it's the perfect time you've probably been drinking a lot of whiskey on your trip so i understand if you if you don't want to but um, keep up the uh, the awesome content, Eric. I mean, your Scotch information you provided in all those videos is just incredible. And uh, I'm looking forward to all you you're going to be putting out about uh, the trip you just took. So that's going to be awesome. The Valentine's Day robe, yeah, I got to incorporate that Valentine's Day robe into something with a super chat. Maybe we'll see. That's got to be something. If any of you have not seen my Valentine's Day episode, I thought it was pretty funny. Um, I don't know. It's just for fun. It was when I was first starting my channel, so I probably had like 300, 400 subscribers. Valentine's Day came up, and it was like, let's just do a fun video. So it was a little sexual, a little sexual, but I think I think you got to give the people what they want, right? Mictors. Mictors. Have, have any of you had a bad Mictors, though? Really? Have any of you had a bad Mictors? I don't think so. Hmm. Delicious. So good. So good. Mm. All right, what time is it? 10.15. With all these issues, man, I don't know. 
Sensual indeed, Neil the Deal says. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know how it is. You gotta do it. Charles Ash Ashworth says he has not had a bad Michter's. Yeah. One of the first rye whiskeys I ever bought was actually the Michter's, um, just the normal rye whiskey. So impressed. So impressed with that. And, um, you know, I, I could have included that in one of my flights, but I feel like that would just win pretty easily, uh, honestly. Um, and it is a $40 bottle, too. The rest of them were about $25, $30. $25, really. And um, a $40 bottle, that's a big difference, but it's good. I really like that Mictor's Rye. Eric's got a uh, early trip to space at 5 a.m. Ooh, you better get back to bed then. Get your sleep. Jason Coates wasn't a big fan of the, the basic Mictor's Rye. I mean, honestly, I like the Mictor's Rye and the um, and the Knob Creek Rye. Just even the base Knob Creek Rye. Those were the first two rye bottles I ever bought. And, you know, good. <laughs> Oh boy, Rob360 said, oh boy, Makers46 kicked in. He'll be sleeping well tonight. Yeah, buddy. That was the cowboy hat emo. That's why I threw that in there, you know. Steve A says, regular plain old Mictors Rye was his first bottle of rye too. Introed into the uh, Manhattan by a mixologist in Vegas. Ooh, how about that? Oh, no Texas whiskey, Eric? Oh. We were just talking about Texas whiskey earlier today. That's sad. That stuff is really good. Mm. I'll hang out with you guys till uh, till I finish my dram here. Still got a little bit left. <laughs> Guy Davis says he's an old gray hair and proud. It's a good way to be, buddy. It's a good way to be. Got to do it. You know, Steve, I don't think I've ever had a... I don't think I've ever had a Manhattan with Michter's rye. When I first bought that bottle, I was drinking everything neat. I really didn't have cocktails too much. I'll have to get another bottle of that. It'd be interesting to try the normal Michter's rye next to the barrel strength rye and see if we can pick up a you know, similarity in flavor profile or not. So I'll have to get another bottle. Peter, I mean, once you move to cast strength rye, I agree, it's probably going to be a little meh. You know, now that we've done, like, we have these bottles and we've tried these bottles, it's probably going to be a little little rough going back to something that low. Um, see you later, Dusty Dan. Thanks for being here. Everyone go check out Dusty Dan's whiskey reviews. He's got great stuff he's doing. Putting out some good bottles, dusty dusties, and the regular stuff too, of course. Them and uh, and also the Oak and Smoke and the Bourbon Buddies. We got we got whiskey channels all over, all doing great things. You guys all need to check all them out. Give them a subscribe because they are all doing great stuff. I would not call out a channel if I don't think they're doing a good job, and everyone I just named is doing an awesome job. So. Richie Z says he hasn't had a bad Michter's. The toasted oak barrel rye was amazing. Yeah, I see, and I haven't had the toasted oak one. I did try the toasted oak um, bourbon, though, the toasted barrel finished bourbon. Oh, my gosh. That stuff was like, that stuff was on another level of good, honestly. I think I had the, like, the first release of it, which is the, I think 2017 was the first release of that. And that stuff, oh my gosh, I had it at a bar near me. It was instantly like probably one of my favorite whisk, one of my favorite bourbons I've had in recent memory. It was just such a such a well-rounded that toasted note, that toasted note I love. So good. Mm. Uh, Matt says the toasted rye is so much better than the bourbon. Really? That's promising because I like the bourbon a lot. It's funny you say that though because the... Um... All right, Eric, we'll see you. Go back to sleep. 
Get your two hours till uh till you gotta wake up. Good night, pal Joey. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Um I'm curious to see if there's a big difference between the the Michter's toasted barrel finish, you know, the 2017 release versus like the ones from last year because secondary prices, there was a difference when I was following that a lot more. It's it's like the the 2017 sold for a lot more now. It must be quality thing I I would guess, you know. Um I'm sure the 19 is good too, but something about the toasted oak is good. No, Doug, the, the toasted oak's not available here. I've never seen a bottle ever except when I was at that bar. So so Jason says the same thing. Wasn't impressed with the Michter's toasted bourbon, uh, but the toasted rye on the other hand was great. Interesting. Did you have the newer one, Jason, or the older one? I don't know. It was after. It was actually after the Heaven Hill tasting when I tried the, the Michter's toasted bourbon. So it's possible I just had already had like tonight, like eight samples and I, <laughs> I tried and I was like, oh my gosh, so good. <laughs> so good. Brandon White says he's going to the uh, Michter's Distillery in November. Ooh, very nice. Never had any Michter's products. Wow. So what, so that's a good question. So what do you recommend to someone who's never had a Michter's before? So you're going to get to try some, if you're going to the distillery, you're going to try a flight probably of their, their normal expression the rye, the sour mash, I'm guessing, and maybe one more. Maybe they'll just give you three. I would recommend, I actually like the sour mash. Again, I'm one of those I've only had a pour of once, but I actually enjoyed it more than I did the um, the base Michter's bourbon. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, the sour mash is just something a little different, I guess, and I, I quite enjoyed it. That that's kind of a whiskey from what I've heard from other people. They either love it or hate it, though. So some, you know, you may love it, you may hate it. it might be good to get a, a pour first. The uh, the Michter's bourbon, love the Michter's bourbon. Terry D said, "Yeah, Michter's bourbon is just solid too, though. That's the thing. Like you can't go wrong with the Michter's. No matter what you try, you're gonna like it. I really think so. I really think so." Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. If you guys ever get a chance to get the other expressions of Michter's though, like the barrel strength, bourbon, barrel strength, rye, toasted barrel finish, um, the toasted rye, even the Michter's 10 year, I have the Michter's 10 year and I'm a really big fan of the Michter's 10 year, especially the 2019. I, I'm convinced it's older. I haven't emailed the distillery yet about the specs on the specific bottle. I'm thinking about doing it. It tastes like it's older than 10 years. But I would say Im immediately pick this up. I know this does this kind of stuff does pop up in certain areas. Again, it's about a $70 bottle, but I think this is worth every penny for sure. And when you go to the distillery um, in November, Brandon, I would recommend you do go ahead and do that you know, Fort Nelson, fill your own bottle type thing. That's kind of a once in a lifetime thing. You get to sign the bottle yourself. Um, I think that'd be a really cool experience. I'm hoping to make it to Kentucky coming up in uh, August. Hoping to meet some whiskey folks down there, some other whiskey tubers. If we uh, we get a chance, I'm really hoping we can all meet up and, and do something, do some distillery tours and hang out, have a great time. So keep an eye out for that. I'm probably going either way. Even if I have to go myself, I'll go. So... <laughs> But it'll be uh it'll be a good time either way. Brandon, it's more yeah, it's more expensive than the normal bottle, but it's a once in a lifetime experience. You know, you get to fill your own bottle. It's your bottle, you get a nice little case with it too. So I think I think it's worth it, you know. Hmm. I'm nursing this mixtures. I want to keep hanging out with you guys. I'm nursing it. Hmm. This stream is just going to be the death of me, I swear. It's angering me so much. I'm sorry, y'all. Really sorry. But I appreciate you guys being here anyway. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm. 
just refill it. DH Silva says, <laughs> Mark JG says, just pour more. I could do that. You know what I'll do at the end? I will do, um, this is the end. Richie Z, no work tomorrow. Thank you, sweet baby Jesus. No work tomorrow. I have gone a lot of days in a row and I need a break, a real break. So no work tomorrow. I get the weekend off. Starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow, I'm going to be doing some um, whiskey room remodel. So, yee, 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 yee. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. Fun stream, internet issues or not. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that a lot. It really does mean a lot. I'm going to do, I don't know if I finished my thought, um, but I'm going to do a um, a blend. A mini blend again. Shout out to Jason from the Mash and Drum. Sorry for stealing that. Um, we're going to do the uh, the cheap whiskey blend again, and we're going to do um, the cast strength blend again. So I'll keep a little bit of this mixer's barrel. <laughs> I know, Richie Z, but I don't like it. I don't like using the webcam like this. I don't like... It's like I'm just sitting at a computer, you know? I don't like that. So I I'm going to get that fixed. I'm going to get it changed. I appreciate you saying that. Um, he's... He's a great guy, I'm sure. He's just not one of the whiskey tubers I look up to. So, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Taking the Founders Tour at Fort Nelson. Oh, man. Seven samples. You're going to get to try some good stuff then. Not that it's not all good, but any idea what the lineup is of stuff you're going to be trying? How about that? I want to do that, too. I'm going to have to look into that. I would love to do that because I have not been to the new Michter's Distillery since it just opened. All right, let's pour our, this is our base expressions together. Um, so there's not much of the Old Forester left. Quite a bit of the Sazerac, or no, not much of the Sazerac Rye left. Quite a bit, of, or a little bit of the Old Forester left. Um, a lot of the Rittenhouse left. And this is two, which is the old Overholt Infinity Blend, Rye Infinity Blend. That's a lot of whiskey. I'm not gonna finish all that. <laughs> Quig is the whiskey tube stream god. <laughs> Could be food quick if you turn the lights out. I could do that easily enough. For the love of God, if it helped my internet, I'd try anything. Oh, it's just so um, mellow. I mean, most of these are 100 proof whiskey, so it, I'm saying it's mellow, but it is. It's it's mellow. Chad Holly drinking some Midwinter's Night Dram. Oh, that stuff's good. I have a bottle I have not opened, but I have, um, I tried it at a buddy's house the other day. Very interesting, very unique rye. That port finish makes all the difference in what that rye is, what it's all about. Good stuff, though. Brandon Weiss says he's drinking the uh, Michter's Single Barrel Kentucky Straight Rye. Um, oh, no, he's just saying. Entering the barrel at 103 proof. Michter's Straight Rye entering the barrel at 125 proof. Okay. Interesting. So you're going to try two different barrel entries. That'll be interesting. And I'm curious to see what the old, uh, or what the new, um, the proof is on it once it's pulled out of the barrel. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> watching Quig is like watching the Blair Witch Project with whiskey. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's going to be really interesting, Brandon. I think you're going to like that. It'll be really cool to try them side by side and see. Um, Shaq's Homestead, Sour Mash, Bomberger's Declaration, Kentucky, Mictor's Tenure, um, and the limited release Toasted Barrel. Interesting. So report back to me and tell me what you think of that Toasted Barrel. See if I was just super drunk, which I probably was, or if it's good. Also, the Mictor's 10, I'm curious what you think. You know what? Just report back on all of them. How about that? Thank you, buddy. Mm. It's not bad. Um, it just smells so muted, so tamed, so mild compared to everything else we've been drinking now. So, 
Ah. What sticks out? The written house. The written house sticks out. I think probably because that's the most that was left, you know. So that's why it sticks out the most. Um, it's not that good. <laughs> that sample's not that good, honestly. But that's all right. On their own, they're good. Mixed, it's not that great. Lennox Cat says the mixture's toasted he had was very good. Okay, good. Um, so we've got four and three, which is Pikesville and Knob Creek. Mm -hmm. All right. See you later, bourbon buddies. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for watching the whole time. Thanks for chatting and being active. I appreciate it. Take her easy. <laughs> Just a man in a four plus hour drinking session. <laughs> Brings us all along for the ride. <laughs> uh, sample one is here. Um, Sagamore. I had to cheat. Sorry, guys. And then uh, my mixture is just the tiny little bit that's left. So just to cap her off. Hmm. Well, that's kicked up in proof. Whew. The Sagamore and the Knob Creek are predominant on this nose, I think. <laughs> yeah, Terry, I don't know if that's the whiskey or the, the stream, so I can't help you there, buddy. Whew. Whew. That's a lot. Um, <laughs> Dustin. <laughs> it's good. Just good stuff. Richie, that's a good idea. Um, I can do that. I have it here. Any, I mean, all four of those cast drink rye whiskeys are good. So, I mean, this is, this is good on its own. I'm going to pour this into a smaller glen. Just so I can, if I add water, it might actually open up a little bit. No, Jason, no Canadian club is getting anywhere near my good whiskey tonight. I've had enough of that to last a lifetime. Thank you very much. You wait. I'm I'm going to send you guys all samples. And I am going special whiskey shopping just for all you bastards. So that you are going to get some good stuff. I can't wait. And you're going to try them with every question you miss. Which is going to be every question. Get ready. This was about four or five drops. I decided I had quite a bit since this is the cast strength sample. Much more muted. Andrew Sparrell says the 40 year old Canadian club. Um, yeah, a lot of people say that's great. The crazy part to me is a 40 year old Canadian club probably tastes like a 15 year bourbon maybe. I mean age wise comparison because Canada's climate's so different. Nothing is worse than the Creed. Oh, we'll find out. We'll find out, buddy. I've got some Canadian mist with your name on it. Possibly the worst thing I've ever tasted. Even worse than Canadian Club. Canadian Club is like a luxury after trying Canadian mist. I'm telling you. Muted. Um, much better without water already on the nose. At this point, with all the whiskey we've had, I'm just spewing words, so take with it what you will. Oh, God. Super chat for Canadian Club? I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know if I could do it. Every sip I took during that stream was just honestly torturous to me. It really was. It was really torturous. Woo! Wow, that brought out more spice to me. Ha! Huh. My tongue is like burning. Holy crap! 
Goodness gracious. Back of my tongue is on fire. What the hell? That water. <laughs> DH Silv says, add a drop of Ardbeg to that blend. It'll be great. I don't have my Ardbeg bottle back here, though. It's in a different room. Sounds like an episode idea, though. DH Silv, next time you're here for the next live, remind me, and I'll, I'll do that for the next live stream, okay? I will. I'll pour rye whiskey with uh, with Ardbeg. That sounds pretty good. Ardbeg with anything is probably good. Uh, don't drop the glass. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Sproul says we need to get Chris a Canadian Club t-shirt to wear. Maybe get the stream sponsored. I'll sell out. I'll sell out if I have to. No, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I couldn't get... If they sent me all the Canadian Club in the world, I couldn't give an honest... I couldn't give a fake review on that whiskey. I couldn't. There's no way. I couldn't pretend like it's good. It's just absolute sewer garbage. It's just sewer water is what it is. I, I It is. Stuff is so disgusting. Yeah, Richie. Um, I assume my internet will work better outside, honestly, than it will here. So I'll try that. We're going to have to do the whole 30 minute reset the camera 30 minute thing, but I'll figure that out. Um, if we have to do it, whatever, the camera will turn off for like five seconds, hopefully, and then I'll go back to it, turn it back on. It's just, I wish I had known that when I bought the camera, I would have got a different one, but otherwise I can always move the webcam upstairs too, and that'll work. So as long as the internet's good, which is supposed to be better, you know, we should be fine. I'd love to do some outdoor ones though. Get the birdies in the background, the dogs barking, skunks. Skunking? I don't I don't fucking know. Ooh, Black Velvet, that's another good one, Matt. Matt, I'm gonna talk to you. We'll we'll talk about what, what disgusting whiskeys I should send out. Uh Brandon Weiss, my new internet speed is gonna be seventy five or a hundred megs per second, I think. Something like that. It's the best that it's AT and T. So AT and T here in my area. We're kind of in Michigan in the, the 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 boonies, the hicks a little bit, I guess, if you will. Um, but um, that's the best they offer, so I'm going to get that. But they are getting me a Wi-Fi extender, too, so it's going to help boost the signal, make things better, hopefully. So we'll see. Jason. <laughs> Jason says he'll be studying up. You don't need to do any studying, buddy. Everyone else needs to do the studying. You can just sit back, relax. Don't do anything but drink whiskey and kill those brain cells, would you, bud? Oh, Matt, that's a great idea. Upcoming. It's on the books. Um, whiskey Crusaders and I now, we are going to be doing a stream about horrible whiskeys. Worst whiskeys you shouldn't drink. We're going to drink them all. Brandon, get, get out of here. That's cute. I get 300 gigs. Get out of here. No wonder it looks like crap. I need to move. You live in a big city? Like, I don't have fiber. I don't have anything like that. I don't have any of that stuff. It's just... Five most disgusting whiskey episode? <laughs> I'll have to take a poll of every, everyone. Ask everyone in the community what it is, and we'll, we'll find out. I guarantee you Canadian Mist is going to be in there. I don't know. They may all be Canadian, Andrew. <laughs> it's very possible. <laughs> a thousand?! So 75 is just garbage. I may, I'm going to have to switch companies and see if anything else, anyone else can offer anything else. Rock Gut would be a great one to have in on that. Yeah. Steve, that's a great idea. We could do that too. Because that's their whole channel, man. It's their whole channel. They do a lot of great stuff. SoCal probably has... It's a lot more... A lot more people and a lot more uh, people who want good internet probably. So <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I'd love to have Rock go down too. That's a great idea. We should do that. We'll talk about it, Matt. I'd love to do that. Mm. <laughs> Chad. Chad Holly says, Canada apologizes for shitty whiskey. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> it's all right. You guys have a couple keepers. 
some of those JP Wisers are really good. Um, the, uh, the cast strength lot 40 is great. Dustin says 75 is just fine. Question is your upload speed. Um, which sucks normally with cable. Oh, shit. I'll talk to the tech guy when he comes out next Tuesday. I'll ask him what I can do to get it, get it better, you know. I don't want any, like, I want full 1080, 1080p the whole time for you guys. I don't want any, anything at all going out. Like, it shouldn't. With how much I have to pay, I shouldn't be having is any issues at all, so. Sheesh. College town internet, yeah. I could stream fine back at my college town. <laughs> Last straw out of Canada makes delicious stuff, Jason says. Never had any of that. I'll have to look for that too. Nick Foles, I actually have a Caribou Crossing. I don't have a bottle, but I have a store near me that um, just got a store pick, which they do a lot of. Supposedly, it's really good. I, I should pick up a bottle. Again, I'm kind of I'm kind of worried about anything Canadian at this point. Maple syrup, pancakes, French toast, everything. Yeah, Doug says look at Trenny and C's channel to uh, see Canadian whiskeys to avoid. Yeah, Trenny and C actually, I I didn't know about their channel for a long time, and I just found them not that long ago. It's um, it's really good. Um, I really like their content, and the stuff they're doing. So they 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 play well off each other. 8K Samsung TV. Oh, <laughs> you're a bad influence, Brandon. Come on, man. Get a new 4K camera. I, I need it. My wife won't ever let me, but I need it because I'm sick of seeing like every time I watch, watch back like my episodes, I just see like bottles that look blurry. And that's like my biggest pet peeve. If I see bottles that are blurry or whatever, the close up of my face is blurry. Like I get so upset at that. It just angers me so much. I get so upset. Everyone says that caribou is pretty good. Yeah, I've heard good things about it too. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, and, you know, I'm sure there's good. I've done a Canadian whiskey live stream with the Whiskey Explorer. And he sent me some good stuff. So it's not like there's bad. There's all bad Canadian. It's just I prefer maybe the one or two things that I've had that are good Canadian or bourbon or scotch. <laughs> Honestly, so just the truth. Mm. adding water to this cast strength combo like just destroys the back of my tongue Woo. Spencer Mab welcome in buddy don't get mad get glad by purchasing a 4k camera <laughs> I'll do some browsing you know, though, Amazon Prime Day is coming up like in two days, three days. So hefty, hefty, hefty. <laughs> if there's any time to talk my wife into getting something, it's during Prime Day. So we'll see. We'll see. But, honey, there's so many things, so many things I could do with a 4K camera. Take it on places I go. I go on trips. It'll be so much clearer. Get to see my beard up close, you know, with high quality. It's like... I don't know. It'd be great. I don't think my eyes even see an 8K. <laughs> yeah. Doug, you're right. Um, well, if I had a 4K camera, I'd probably still down, like, down resolution to, to 1080i. But, like, the the close-ups and the frames and things like that would be better, I think. So, Amazon Prime Day is in two days. That makes sense. I know. I know. Thank you, Richie. I appreciate that. I appreciate everyone hanging out through this whole disaster of a live stream, but it will get better. I'm convinced. Mm. 8K. You know, I saw an advertisement on TV the other day for 8K, and I was like, what? what is that even like? When they first introduced the 4K TVs, I was seeing like people's People on TV, like, their pimples up close, like, their pores look like they're super wide. I'm like, what? I don't want to see that close. I don't want to see the baseball players all drenched in sweat, like, up close like that. But now 8K? Like, really? <laughs> Tell ya. See everything. 
8K 60 inch TV, you need to be like two feet from the screen to see the pixels. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. You're probably right, Steve. I mean, that actually makes sense. Thanks, Jason. Um, I hope that's right. On my stream health, I'm still getting like spotty off and on, so I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, they make 8K TVs, but you can't watch anything in 8K. You're right. Same with 4K, even for a lot of stuff. Netflix finally has a couple things in 4K, but most of the stuff is not 4K, and most of YouTube's still not 4K either, so. Uh, Steve A said to check Discord. He put a YouTube link in. I will check Discord. Let's switch screens here. Is an 8K TV worth it all? Okay, there you go. Everyone go to my Discord. Join the Insanity. Steve, if you want to drop a link in there, that'd be great, buddy. Um, and check out this, uh, this video that Steve just put in here. Is an 8K TV worth it? That's the question. At this point, I would say no, because there's even like any cable, Netflix, anything you would have, there's nothing 8K. Like, what is the point? And people replace their TVs every five to seven years. I'm too cheap, so I've had mine since college, but most of the time, <laughs> I mean, most of the time, <laughs> you know. I know, Jason. Right when you said that, I looked and I was like, stream health is, is crap. I'm like, shit. He just said it. Thanks a lot, buddy. Start up another stream, Richie says. Hmm. Hey, get prepared. I'm figuring out some stuff for this thousand subscriber stream. I think it might be a long one. I said, honey, what do you think about 24 hours? And she wasn't on board, so that probably won't happen. So don't get your hopes up. But that would be like my ultimate goal. My ass would hurt so bad from sitting in this chair for 24 hours. I can't imagine. And I couldn't drink whiskey for 24 hours. I would pass out my chair and sleep, and I'd be on live stream just sleeping in this chair. But wouldn't it be cool? It'd be cool either way. You guys could just watch me sleep. <laughs> yeah, five plus year old monitors for your computer. Yeah. T shirts five years old. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I don't upgrade my stuff all the time like some people do. A lot of people upgrade their computers every year, every two years, their TVs every two years. I don't do that. Nah, I don't do that. <laughs> Dustin. <laughs> Dustin says, I'll super chat you if you're passed out in your chair. I appreciate that. Thank you. I won't call it out probably, but um, I do appreciate that either way. That's nice. Nice of you to say so. <laughs> <laughs> Charles yeah we'll just check on you every so often three hours later still sleeping okay he's fine he's breathing no big deal Chad Holly I could talk to you about uh some stuff actually because he said as a physical therapist I don't recommend 24 hours in that crappy chair you're right I'd have to do some standing some moving around figure out a way to move the camera around with me and do some some stuff that'd be really cool go on location somewhere maybe I don't know that sounds like a lot of work to do, but that'd be really fun to do. Hmm. Could always get a couch in there. You know, I, I already thought about that because in the middle, I'm going to have whiskey shelves all the way from the very top of this room all the way down to the pretty much the floor, like a foot above the floor. My wife designed it really nice for the layout of the shelves. Um, I think it's going to look great. She did a great job designing. I'm hoping we can actually make it. Make it work. I recommend a hammock for a 24-hour stream. <laughs> yeah. Lay in a hammock. 24 hours, we'll need drunk push-ups and squats. You got it. I'll need to work out after that. Every hour, I'll take a five-minute workout break. I'll just get up with a dram of whiskey, and I'll just do some squats, some jumping jacks, you know. Just get prepped for the next hour. It'd be fun though. I could, I mean, I could reach out to some people, some local distilleries that I visited and get people on the channel every hour, kind of like what they, what they did, you know? I mean, obviously the overnight hours aren't going to work very well unless I could find some scotch distillers. We'll see. I got to do some serious planning if that's the, if that's the case. 
Uh, yes, Andrew, that's absolutely correct. That is the reason I'm building the room because my bar top in my basement is completely full. I have no room to add anything else. So I am just going to make this entire wall a whiskey wall. Um, each shelf will have room for about two bottles stacked front in front of each other. So it should be enough room to hold my bottles, I think. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Ah. Oh. You could put that board on the floor and do some break dancing. <laughs> oh man, this is you guys are are bad influences on me. But this is giving me a lot of ideas. Break dancing hour. <laughs> oh man. Good stuff. Uh, Brandon Weiss says, must be nice to have whiskey bottles on the walls. I can't do the stupid earthquakes. Yeah. That is one of the benefits of living in Michigan. No earthquakes, no flooding, really. You know, no hurricanes, none of that stuff. It's it's good stuff. Yeah, uh, DHC, that's a good point. You need to buy more expensive scotch. It won't save you money, but you'll have less bottles. That's true. That's true. Um, I love scotch, too. The stuff, the scotch I've been trying, it's, it's eye-opening. I mean, you... Yeah. You people know it's it's eye opening the Scotch world. I I'm a fan of both. I'm a big fan of both. So, <laughs> Jason, Jason's on a, another level with these comments tonight. Get out the boombox and the swooshy pants. Yeah, I'll break out my MC Hammer. <laughs> oh. oh, 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 oh. Could be fun. Break dancing with the boombox. I like it. I like it. Mm. Dustin said he bought the Highland Park 25 for a friend. It's right behind him, killing you not to open it and have a sample. I mean, you bought the thing for him. He should at least give you a sample. I know I would. I'd give you a sample, bud. Go for it. Break it open right now. Pour it in your glass and let us know how it is. If he has an issue with you opening the bottle, tell him to talk to me. I'll talk to him, okay? I'll explain why it's more important to share and not hoard bottles, okay? Just just send them to me. I'll take care of it, all right? Oh, Jason planning an epic drum solo for his one-year anniversary. Oh, yes. That will be nice. That will be nice. I can't wait to see that. Very nice. Steve A., I'm getting that way now. Um... I'm getting that way with scotch, honestly. It's so easy to drink and so delicious. Down and do my belly. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. That 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 drum solo, Jason. Well, you did that drum solo on the on Bill's the Whiskey Dicks channel um, after like three and a half hours of whiskey, and um, that was great. That was great. I loved it. Uh, that was awesome. Great time. We need to do more of those streams. I hope, I'm really nervous about August 1st. I'm hoping YouTube has to do something where we can still collab with other channels and do stuff together, you know. We'll see. We'll see, but. Um, Bourbon Apprentice, thank you for being here. Um, yeah, still going strong, very late. You're fine. Um, I'm getting a new tattoo. Nice, buddy. Hope you like it, because that's for life. Thanks for being here, though. Yeah, you. Uh, we're having a rough stream. I'm having internet issues, but I'm still powering through. So, all you guys are the real, the real MVPs. We're still here, you guys and gals. You, you, you the real MVPs. Your wife, Terry D says his wife used to bang the drums. Oh, I'm sorry. My mind was completely over there. Um, bang the drums, like play the drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're good, buddy. That's fine. If she's banging the drums, you you got more problems to worry about. But uh, banging the drums, that's fine. That's fine. Good stuff. The whiskey's kicking in, guys. The whiskey is kicking in. I'll bring the bass. Yeah, buddy. Mm. I don't know. You don't want to deal with those earthquakes. You don't want to deal with those with those earthquakes um, in your whiskey bottles. That's some good juice. You don't want that stuff spilling and breaking. 
Atta boy, Terry D says. <laughs> That rye, ay ay ay. Adding water to that rye sample, infinity sample, kicking my ass, my tongue's ass. Bang the drum, is that what the drummer does after he bangs your wife? <laughs> that is correct. Whew, that stuff is, anybody ever have that where they add water to their, like a rye whiskey and it gets more, more bite, you know, a lot more punch to it? I don't know what it is. Makes the ball game more unpredictable. <laughs> nice. Oh, Pete, at the end of the night, you're switching to boogers? I like your style, buddy. I like your style. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, man. Wow. Brandon Weiss said he switched to Stag Jr. Is everyone switching to Barrel Proofs right now? End of the night, everyone switching to Barrel Proofs? How about that? I'm going back to the, um, the lower proof. No, this is not the lower proof. This is the cast strength. This is the lower proof here. Cast strength is my bourbon saying glass. That's how I remember. That's how I keep it straight. Boogers, not bookers. <laughs> You're moving on to the boogers? Ew, Pete. Off your rocker. Ooh, nice batch. That's one huge batch. Barrel proof nightcaps. Twisting your arm, Chad. I guess you have to grab the A119 if you have to. Who else is grabbing their barrel proof right now? I'll finish it with this cast strength sample. I'll go barrel proof with y'all. Y'all. Bourbon Apprentice says his pores were all over the place tonight. A little bit of everything. Hey, that's fine. Keep your palate guessing. That's how you train yourself, buddy. It's all practice. We're talking about practice. We're talking about practice. So, mm, so vanilla. It stings the nostrils. <laughs> Guy Davis says he stayed with the Buffalo Trace, had some Elijah Craig, but no higher, but I go higher proof tomorrow. Ooh, higher proof tomorrow. I like it. Mm. Any, um... Any of my patrons, keep an eye out tomorrow. I might post a little um, whiskey room remodel clip tomorrow for you guys. Not the whole video, like I'll put out for you later, but. Charles Ashworth said, sounds like a great t-shirt, Chris. Who's grabbing the barrel proof? I like it, yeah. I'm going to have to do, I want to make more t-shirt designs. So I have my normal Bourbon Sane logo t-shirt, but I want to do something. I don't really have nice, fun sayings, really, like um, some of the other channels do. Um, just the stay insane thing, of course, but like now I, I feel like I want to do something with, unfortunately, I want to do something with Canadian club, <sighs> something negative, maybe, <laughs> I mean, definitely negative, definitely negative. Cause it's shit whiskey. So something negative. Um, but I don't know what I would say in a t-shirt <laughs> who's grabbing the barrel proof. End of the night, barrel proof nightcap. I like, um, I do like Richie Z's little saying there. I think I might, that might be a good one to go with. Barrel proof nightcaps. And then think of a cool picture to put with that. Heck yeah. That's the only way to end the night. Barrel proof nightcaps. Mm. Little book, Bardstown Bourbon Company Fusion and Discovery, Victor Small Badge and Turkey 101. I like it. I like it all. 
all good options. You worked from best to worst pretty much. Good stuff. Mm. <laughs> Dustin, I just read your comment. Alan Iverson, you're an old man now. Let it go. <laughs> oh, God, Matt, I don't know. I don't know if I could say that and ever try to make money off that shirt. Canadian Club, it's the shit. That's it. That's it, just like that. I, I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Oh, that is a good band name, Jason. Barrel Proof Nightcaps. A slap at the bass. Slap at the bass with the nightcaps. Stellar Matrix is going with the Knob Creek twice barreled rye at the moment. And I'm curious as to your thoughts on that, because I have heard mixed reviews on that bottle. A couple people that really liked it, other people hated it. So I'm curious what you think of that. Dustin Martin says, Barrel Proof Nightcap. I'll pour some Shiny Barrel. Makes Teresa's Batch look like crap. That's because Teresa's Batch is crap. That's why that's like that. Yes. <laughs> Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> Get a shot with a girl with a huge rack holding an Elijah Craig barrel proof. Tagline, hey girl, I love your huge ABV. <laughs> That's great. That's good. We'll figure it out. We'll get something good. <laughs> kitchen table is delicious, Chad. I love kitchen table. Um... Teresa's batch was disappointing. I still don't have the new one, though, the shiny barrel. I still have not gotten that yet. You know, the funny thing is, Jason, poor Teresa, he says. Like, the, the irony is, is she was quality control. She was quality control at Jim Beam, and she, you know, and it was made in her honor. So it's funny, the, the quality control and the quality was garbage. So it's too bad. Kathleen, on the other hand, they did her right. I love Kathleen's batch. It's one of my favorites. Pete McNeil says, Teresa's Batch, just different. Yeah, it's a nice way to say it. Just different. I mean, it, it's it's still better than a lot of whiskeys out there. It's just, it's not a Booker's. Like, it does not live up to what Booker's should be for $80. I mean, it's an $80 bourbon. It does not, it's not an $80 bourbon. That one's not. Richie Z's having the 2015-05 uh, uh, Booker's. A couple days ago, he found it at Mama's Batch. Pretty darn good, yeah. Is that the one I saw you post on Instagram earlier? Um, that one looked really good. I've not had that one either. Mm. Backyard Barbecue was solid as well. Um, not my favorite of the year, but it was still good. I still put Kathleen and uh, Kitchen Table over it. Nothing wrong with any, really any Booker's Batch. Teresa is definitely the weakest I've had in recent memory, but... She has a good personality, though, Terry D says. <laughs> I'm sure she does. She has a great personality. <laughs> hmm. Interesting, Dustin. He said his friend um, sampled the next Booker's Batch. First batch came out terrible. Luckily, the master blender said it wasn't good, and they won't get that one. That's why you have to have someone good doing your doing your dirty work, you know? You have to. Jason Coates still has not tried Booker's, he said. Um, you know, at this point, be selective with your batches, I guess. Watch people like me and Jason and High Whiskey She Wines, bourbon, bourbon Junkies, you know, and see what they think is is good because if you watched our review on Teresa's batch like I would not have picked it up myself after trying trying it you know for that price like I would have waited till shiny barrel Jason you know Jason seemed to really like the the shiny barrel batch so I just haven't seen it yet here so I'm sure it'll pop up at some point and I'll get it but interested to uh try it try it separate so 
Brandon Weiss asked, did your wife steal another bottle of Booker's for you? <laughs> I mean, she's a keeper. Let's just say that. For any of you who didn't see, um, the security tag was never taken off on my Booker's batch, uh, Teresa's batch, when I uh, got that bottle from uh, my local store. And uh, she picked it up for me because I said, hey, if you see the new batch, go ahead and pick it up so I can review it and try it and see how good it is. And she... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she picked it up and they forgot to take the security tag off so the bottle still has it on there like it's metal so I don't know how to cut the thing off so I just figured I left it on I did the review with it on I do, I've done a couple live streams with it on so who cares it, it's fun but apparently that's not the first time that's happened like it's happened a lot of times the thing didn't even beep when I went out the store so like what's the point I, I don't know or according to her at least it, it didn't beep so Uh, Steve A said, be careful where you set your microphone's directional. I'm getting a new microphone very soon because for the new scenes I'm going to be doing, different areas, I'm going to need a new microphone anyway. So this is going to be gone. I'm going to be upgrading very soon. So, But thank you for the heads up. I appreciate that. I had to sit back. I have a pinched nerve right now in my back and it's killing me. So that needs to heal before the 24-hour stream. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, Richie Z said, DM me your uh, PayPal address and I'll super chat. And I, since I can't super chat, I'll send you one anyway. <laughs> Not necessary, Richie. Thank you very much, though. Appreciate that. Rock Gut Review is here. Good to see you. We were just talking about you. We want to do an episode that's uh, worst whiskeys out there. And we think you'd be a great one to be talking about that. So we're going to have to set something up. I'll reach out to you about setting up a live stream. Uh, me, you guys, and the Whiskey Crusaders. That would be a lot of fun. Worst whiskeys. Because I need some ideas for the next time I get with Jason and Bobby and Sam and Sean and Dan. Because I need some good stuff. So, mm. Yeah, Steve, I know. It's getting to that time. Trying to finish this... Uh, this Duran, but we're getting to uh, to that point, I think. So you do you do have experience in that, that's for sure. You absolutely do <laughs> a lot of experience, probably more than you would ever want. So, all right, I think it's time to wrap up. Um, I appreciate every one of you for being here. Still, thirty three of you in here after this disaster of a live stream with the uh, the internet issues promise it's going to be solved but i appreciate you guys all hanging out either way a great time thank you jason i appreciate that um thank you all for for being here hanging out i wish it would have been a little better but i wanted to do these head-to-heads a great time um picking our favorite barrel strength rye which was the mictor's cast strength of course came out on top and good old baby saz sazerac rye so good choices and a lot of fun. I was in a rye whiskey mood, so I'm glad we got to do it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out tonight, though. Um, keep an eye out probably next week. I do work late next week, but um, actually I don't. So I'm starting my long break from work coming up very soon. I'm going to be getting a good amount of time off. Um, fortunately, my work was kind enough to offer me eight weeks off for because um, I had a baby in the last 12 months. So I'm taking advantage of that and I'm going to be off. So I'm hoping to do more live streams, possibly increase my episodes I'm putting out. We'll see. It's going to be a lot of family time this summer though too. So we're very busy. But thank you guys all for being here. Happy Friday night. I hope you guys all have a great weekend. I hope you enjoyed some barrel proof stuff, some cast strength.